Flagstaff. If you look at the Strava segment, it's about 4.58 miles, 7.4 kilometers, 2,000 feet straight up into the clouds. It's not the most difficult climb in Boulder, Colorado, but it is the most dynamic. It twists and turns, gets steeper, shallower. Official times start at Gregory Canyon and stop at a long row of mailboxes right at the top. An easier first half gives way to the wall, a 400 meter long stretch at nearly 20%. Flag is the test. Beat your best time on these steep slopes and you know you're fit. Go under 30 minutes and you're flying. This is Mike. He's engineered for climbing. Like a greyhound is engineered for speed or a puppy is engineered for cuteness. All of his rides are climbing rides. All of his zones are zone five. Look at him, 5'5", five, five, 117 pounds. This guy only needs about 240 watts to go up this thing in 30 minutes, which is kind of the benchmark around here. Today, we're pitting Mike here against Flagstaff. He's going for his PR. A flag is a difficult one to pace, so I'm actually gonna be following him on an e-bike the whole way up. Ah! Now, a climb like that, that goes up and down and up and down, very, very difficult to pace. So he's got a power meter. He's got a rotor two-in power meter. Rotor also sent over their Q-rings, which basic idea is that you have a bigger gear for the most powerful part of the pedal stroke and a smaller gear for the, le the least powerful part of the pedal stroke. We've been using Rotor's app called Torque 360 to figure out exactly where those chain rings go. So the unique thing about the Rotor Q-rings is that you can change the position on the crank set depending on where your pedal stroke is most powerful. So Mike here is an OCP2, which basically means that he produces a bunch more power near the top of the pedal stroke versus the bottom. And so we have his chain ring set up in OCP2. Now we've made all these little optimizations in the hope that Mike can beat his personal record, which has stood for two years or so. Fingers crossed, let's see if he can do it. The sun is almost here. That means it's almost time for us to get going. It's warming up a little bit. Mike, are you ready? Blink twice for yes. Three, two, one. So like I said, pacing the climb like this is really difficult. The first five minutes are quite steep. So you have to put out a bunch of power then it levels off, and then you got the wall and the finish. The best place to put out more power is on those steep sections because you're only overcoming gravity. You don't have to worry about wind resistance. It does not increase linearly with speed. So you're better off using more of your, more of your watts, basically, on the steeper section. So Mike right now is a little bit over threshold. He's gonna stay over threshold until we get around this first corner, then it levels off, and then he's gonna recover a bit. We're on target, we're on target. This is the last flat section he's gonna see. about to hit the wall. This is 400 meters, 18 to 20%. If you save something for this section, you can make up a lot of time. He's looking a little tired. I'm not so sure about this. It's on the edge, on the PR edge. It's gotta stay on top of it. Gotta stay on top of it. So one of the things about the Q-rings is you do have to spend a bunch of time on them. It takes your legs a little while to get used to them. So Mike's been on them for about, oh, two weeks or so. And he's definitely seen sort of slow power improvements over that time. I think that he's fully adapted at this point, but he actually did have to move the chain rings around a couple times. And that OCP, the, the chain ring positioning thing found the one that worked best for him. He says it feels a lot better than it used to. The power meter is also key for a climb like this. As you've seen, it really kicks up, kicks down. 
without a power meter it's really hard to pace cr properly and you'll see a lot of people fly through that flat section hit the steeps and just fall apart Mike has not fallen apart still cruising We've got two turns left one two he's got to stay on top of it cadence is slowing down Allez, he's got that suffer face Allez, on Give me a sprint! Give me a sprint! We're at the top flag. I have the time. Mike had a bit of a rough go of it there for a brief period, but really pulled it back together at the top of the wall. Paced it well, I thought. Gave it some stick on the, on the lower steep bit, recovered a bit on the flat, hit it again on the wall. The time, 29.46. New PR, and a sub 30. <laughs> Mike has been going for that PR for two years, and he finally got it. An effort like that is all about optimization. You need the right equipment, he had that. You have to pace it perfectly. He did that too. Flag is the test, and he just passed. If you like this video, go ahead, subscribe. It'll make you feel better. It's absolutely free.